The last topic in the mathematical introduction to intermediate microeconomics is convex and concave functions. We're going to be dealing with this just with functions of one variable, although it can be extended to functions of more than one variable. An example of a function which is convex would be the following. Here's why it's convex. If you pick any two pairs of points, let's say this one and this one, on the function, and you draw a straight line between those points, that straight line lies above the function. Those of you who have taken calculus will recognize that if this is f of x, then convexity means that the second derivative of f, in other words, f double prime of x, is a positive number. But the de definition I gave you that didn't use calculus, this definition that between any two pairs of points, a straight line that's drawn should lie above the function, that's actually uh, more general because it works even with functions that aren't, aren't differentiable. Let's clarify. If you pick a pair of points here and here and draw a straight line between them, that straight line lies below the function, li lies above the function. So that part's convex. If you pick this pair, that straight line lies above the function. So functions that are convex don't necessarily have to look like a u. Here's a convex function. It's downward sloping, but if you draw a straight line between any pair of points, that straight line is going to lie above the function, so that, that satisfies the definition of convexity. Here's another convex function. This is upward sloping, rather than when I just, the one I just drew was downward sloping, this one's upward sloping, but it's convex as well, because a, a line drawn between any two pairs of points lies above the function. Here's a function that's not convex. This function is not convex because while there are pairs of points that you can choose that have the property that a straight line drawn between them lies above the function, there are other pairs of points you can choose. For example, this line. Which is not true that the straight line lies above the function because over here in this part the straight line lies below the function. So the definition of convexity is that a function is convex if a straight line drawn between any pair of points, or you can think of as every pair of points, lies above the function. A function is concave, well a mathematician would say a function is concave if, if minus the function is convex. In other words, if f of x is, is convex, then minus f of x is concave f double prime of x is less than zero for those of you who know calculus and if you're working with with sorry about that with um, with functions of, of um, uh, with functions that are differentiable so here's a concave function a straight line lies below the function is another concave function. This one has a positive slope. A straight line drawn between any two pairs of points lies below the function. Here's another concave function. A straight line drawn between any two pairs of points lies below the function. So if concave if a straight line drawn between any two pairs of points lies below the function and convex if a straight line drawn between any two pairs of points lies above the function. One way that I find rather easy to remember it, a function is convex if it looks like it could be generated from any part of the letter u. The left-hand part, the right-hand part, or the whole thing. A function is concave if it looks like it can be generated by any point of an upside-down letter u. 
the left hand part which is positively sloped, the right hand part which is negatively sloped, or the whole upside down letter U. So that's convex and concave and we'll be using these notions of convexity and concavity uh, fairly frequently especially in producer theory.